morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Uh, before we continue looking at how we can effectively minister to children by looking at their learning styles, catering to their learning styles, ministering to them, teaching to them, preparing activities based on their learning styles, uh, we'll begin uh, with a word of prayer. So can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Shall I pray, ma'am? Yes, thank you, Stoney. Father God Almighty, we are so very thankful to you for a new day. Father, we are thankful to you for bringing us together again in your presence to learn, Father, the ways you want us to minister, Father. As we are learning, Father, we ask you to pour out your anointing, your wisdom and your understanding, your revelation to us, Father, so that whatever we are learning, Father, we are able to apply it, Father, use it for your glory, for your kingdom, and to touch the lives of these precious children whom you entrust us, Father. And in days to come, Father, we may see your glorious presence manifesting in every children's church, Father, whom we are ministering, Father, and that we will see your power moving, Father. And whatever we are learning, Father, we may use it and give us that wisdom to apply it, Father, and glorify you in every way and way and walk of life, Father. Bless everyone who is present. Bless everyone who is going to be listening to this knowledge, Father. And we pray that you will continue to work in us and through us to do the ministry in its most efficient way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, just like to say, like, you know, um, when I began teaching your uh, class in the first year, the first semester that all of you were in, you know, just to uh, quite excited, your enthusiasm to ask questions, to discuss, to debate, uh, your eagerness to participate and pray and everything, you know, whether it's asking anyone to pray or, you know, bombarding us with questions or, you know, uh, discussing, sharing your viewpoints. Uh, it was quite an engaging class, an exciting class. It keep, kept us on our toes to look up, to read, to prepare and all of those things, uh, which was also very, very beneficial for, uh, for me as a teacher. Uh, but now, you know, coming to the to your final year, the last semester, I just like to encourage you all as a class to show that same kind of uh, enthusiasm, uh, that zest, that life, you know, which you bring into every class. Um, because of all the batches that I taught in Bible college, yours was somebody was uh, your class was one which was full of life and passion and you know um, enthusiasm to learn and to. You know just uh, know things of God so uh, it's the last semester just uh, hardly two months to go uh, I like to see the same passion that zest that eagerness so uh, you know that motivation that energy that you bring into every class uh, which is missing uh, which kind of um, you know demotivates us um, so, you know, I'd like to, to just encourage you all to bring back that life to class, okay, uh, whatever it is. Um, okay, anyways. <laughs> Thank you, Elisha. I didn't expect that repentance to be so quick. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so... Um, on Monday, we began looking at, um, at uh, you know, how uh, we all, you know, not only children, but all of us learn through our five senses. Uh, it's uh, the primary way that information uh, gets to our brains, um, you know, and so how we can use all of these five senses in uh, teaching children, uh, whether it's narrating a, a, a narrative from the Bible, teaching them a truth, or also you know, doing an activity. Because if you use more than one of these uh, uh, five senses, which is hearing, uh, seeing, um, uh, smell, uh, taste, and touch, you know, more learning happens. It also reduces class boredom. Uh, <clears throat> 
when you reduce class boredom, sorry, you reduce behavioral problems. And um, also, you know, uh, it can help in uh, children recalling the ability to recall uh, whatever they have learned and also uh, their enthusiasm to apply what they are learning. So we looked at um, the auditory learners, uh, children who learn by hearing. Then we looked at... Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, visual learners, children who learn by uh, seeing. And uh, then we went on to talk about uh, uh, children who learn um, by, um, by touch, um, touching. Uh, I spoke about how we can, you know, uh, give them uh, different uh, objects in their hands, which is related to the story, or perhaps give them something from the story to hold, which they, uh, to, you know, which, how they can interact with what you are saying, because you can see some of these children who are constantly fidgeting with their legs, with their body, they won't be sitting right, they'll be moving out of their place, they'll be, you know, uh, you know, uh, peering over uh, their, uh, their uh, neighbor's shoulder, you know, or they use take a pencil or an eraser or a pen or a pencil case or water bottle and they're constantly fidgeting. And that can, uh, you know, kind of get uh, us irritated. But, you know, these children are basically uh, uh, children who learn by touch. So if you just put these things uh, in their hands, you can identify them, put these in their hand related to the object. It connects them. They are listening. They relate back to what you are uh, telling them and it because you are appealing to their um, uh, learning sense. The next one is um, learning uh, through uh, smell. Okay. Um, uh, through smell, so you can get various objects that can um, help them, uh, you know, uh, not just see, but also uh, to smell. So, for example, uh, you know, you can get um, uh, grass or, you know, some herbs or uh, uh, fresh flowers when you're talking about uh, creation. Uh, and also when you bring these herbs or grass or you know, plants or flowers, you can, uh, you, when you're narrating, um, uh, you know, uh, about Jesus' um, betrayal in the Garden of Gethsemane or when he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, you can also talk about uh, the events that happen in the Garden of Eden when you're narrating it to them or creation, you can use this. Uh, you can use vinegar, you know, when you're narrating to them about uh, uh, how um, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, the soldiers tried to give Jesus vinegar to quench his thirst so you, they can just, um, uh, uh, smell that you know uh, fragrant candles you know when you're talking about uh, the the wise men visiting uh, Jesus during Christmas time narrating to and you can just uh, narrating that uh, uh, event uh, you know you can just place some scented candles uh, light it up so that the fragrance can fill the room uh, also perfume you know um, uh, about how this uh, the, the, the woman came and washed Jesus' feet with that expensive uh, perfume. We're talking about Jonah, uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, how Jesus uh, fed the 5,000. You can just get a piece of fish uh, if it's okay. And the, the smell of the fish can just permeate the whole room and, you know, children just get the smell of it. Um, also, um, you know, uh, you can baby powder, uh, you know, for uh, when you're talking, narrating the story of baby Moses or uh, Samuel, um, when you're talking about uh, the burning bush or the fiery furnace in which Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into, you can just, um, you know, bring charred wood or you can just burn something and they can just get that charred, uh, uh, you know, smell. Uh, when you're talking about creation, the fruit of the spirit, you can get various uh, fruits, they can smell. Uh, you know, talking about Good Samaritan, narrating to them about Good Samaritan, you can bring about uh, any medicines or vitamins that have strong odor. You can, you know, they can, children who love to learn by smell, they can smell these things. Um, also, you know, um, scented uh, lamp oil, we have these uh, oils, the perfume, uh, uh, you know, scented uh, uh, oil uh, uh, lamp oil you know which we put on the lamps and when we just light it up you know it gives fragrance to the entire room i uh, can use that for the parable of the 10 maidens um you know even just uh, you know uh, bread or uh, 
uh, you know, when you're talking about uh, how Jesus is the bread of life or how he multiplied the five loaves and two fishes, you can use that. And um, also, um, you know, you can use your own creativity to think about things. You can also bring a, something that is really smelly, a dirty, strong uh, uh, odor, a smell. And you can talk about how, uh, you know, uh, uh, sin is like this, uh, you know, garbage smell that is so, uh, so terrible. Uh, you know, people cannot smell it on us when we are um, uh, in, in sin, but that how detestable our lives are uh, before uh, God. And, you know, what we do when we have something as dirty as this, you know, you can just take it out of the room and just throw it in the garbage uh, bin outside or leave it outside class and say, now we don't get that aroma. Uh, it's the same thing that happens when you know when we get rid of sin in our uh, life so just simple things that you can use um, you know um, uh, to uh, you know help children who learn uh, through um, their uh, sense of a uh, smell and the other thing that is uh, you know uh, children also learn through taste uh, you know uh, um, you can just get them, you know, for a creation. You can, or you're talking about how God created Adam and Eve. You can get these uh, cookies, uh, which have uh, different or, or, or sweets that have uh, candies that have different images of animals or plants or a, a man or a woman, a boy or a girl. Uh, you can use uh, various fruits, you know, cut uh, fruits and just give them to eat one or two pieces when you're talking about creation, you're talking about the first sin of mankind, um, you know, uh, the first miracle that Jesus did of turning the water into wine, you can give them water and then you can give them grape juice, um, you know, um, and you can also use, uh, you know, uh, uh, bread, wafer and grape juice when you're talking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, uh, talking about uh, David and Goliath, you know how David came to that place. He brought uh, grain. You can just bring some grain. Uh, you can get uh, sandwiches. You can get cheese, uh, crackers, whatever. Give it to them to eat. You know, uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000, how the boy brought two, uh, five loaves of fish and two, five loaves of bread, sorry, and two fishes. You know, you can uh, give uh, them to taste bread. I'm sure children might not like the taste of fish, so can do away with that you know um also when you're talking about uh, joseph and his uh, multicolored coat you can have uh, you know gems or uh, mmms you know or these candies which are different colors you can give them each uh, different colors to, to just keep eating even as you're talking about the story um elijah and uh, the widow at Zerifit, you know how she baked bread so you can just give them uh, bread to eat uh, just all of these things that you can use honey also as well you know when you're talking about uh, how Jesus uh, you know uh, made a promise of the covenant that he would take the people of Israel to the promised land a land flowing with milk and honey so you can get some milk and get some honey so all of these things that uh, you could use your own creativity to uh, help children learn uh, by taste so you can use food for learning uh, you know, uh, and use food that represents something very concrete um, uh, in the story, okay? So these are the five um, uh, learning styles, and I just mentioned very briefly how uh, you could, uh, you know, uh, uh, help children or use these learning styles to uh, relate, to, to help them relate to what you're teaching them, the story or the activity, okay? Any other questions anyone has on this? Yes, Asha. Um, Pastor, just a question. Like all these um, five senses, like in preschool, where they teach about like taste, smell, and they bring all the items, can it also be used for like normal, um, like to the church services where the kids, kids' services? So, because I don't know. It depends on the how the like the leader or the person who is in charge of the ch children's church how they conduct it or what. I'm not sure. So I'm just making sure like the things about the five senses that we're learning here, like to make it more interactive in the churches. Um, 
So are you talking about uh, churches in the sense of uh, the separate children's church where they gather or the Sunday school, or you're talking about uh, the children's time in the adult church? Um, no, in the Sunday services, like for the separate ones. Like yeah, the separate ones, when you have your separate ones and you have separate classes for each of them, you will have a, a, a maximum of, just say, even to 10 children. And not everyone would like to, uh, you know, learn by touch. Not everyone would learn to like to learn by taste. So there are only a few of them. So you can uh, uh, you can do this. It's Yeah, you can do this in your class activities. Basically talking about uh, specific classes that we teach in uh, during uh, Sunday school or children's church time. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, one more thing, Pastor. What if what are the some who is missing some of the senses like how are they able to like if you're conducting that thing like without hurting them or anything how are we supposed to like how about that kids to okay. listen to so it's not that uh, each one of us have just one learning style we will have more than one learning style but there'll be one learning style that will be dom dominant com compared to the other learning styles so for example i can learn best by um, uh, you know by um, uh, seeing and i learn best by doing um, and, uh, you know, because I don't like to sit still, I like to keep moving. Uh, so these two things. But uh, for me, the, the dominant one will be more uh, seeing because that will captivate my attention um, more than doing. So if you're not able to uh, have anything uh, for them to do in that specific narrative or taste or touch, uh, then it's okay. But you can do something that will appeal to the other styles of learning basically you know if you're doing something with uh, uh, hearing seeing uh, or touch or you know tasting or whatever it will help did that answer your thank question you. yes pastor thank you so much yes yes charles uh, thank you i wanted to ask about the senses that are missing but already Asha, I think it was Asha who asked about it. I mm -hmm. think you answered it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Charles. Elisha says, uh, you know, uh, uh, the teens, preteens and teens, uh, they can be sent to various uh, uh, exposure to various evangelistic um, uh, opportunities, uh, mission trips uh, to observe things for themselves. Yes, we can do that. We can even take our younger ones because in our children's church we take children from grade one or grade two upward for uh, you know outreach or evangelistic uh, uh, trips you know where they can minister and we put them along with uh, other uh, you know children of other grades so that they're not feeling left out and they're also learning they're also seeing they're also experiencing yes yeah that's a good thing to do for basically for the older ones because it impacts them much more yes Kung says, thank you, Elisha. I hope that helped to uh, answer your uh, suggestion. Kung says, Pastor, from your experience, can you tell us what one is the one sense a children can learn best on an average? Best on an average is uh, hearing and seeing. Hearing and seeing, if you, you know, use both of this, it helps. Hearing also should be something that I said, you know, voice modulation, body language, changing your tone, speaking like, uh, you know, like like when uh, when David came um, uh, to see Goliath and, uh, you know, said, uh, uh, you know, Goliath comes and stands there and he says, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, you can raise your voice, you can say, uh, you know, just thump and come and David came and stood. Of course, you can't do this for the older children. And he says, you know, what am I? Am I a dog that you come to me with a stick and stones? You know, so just changing your voice and uh, <laughs> and it just, uh, you know, it excites the class. Um, children even grade five and six, uh, you know, are um, uh, excited about this um, and then, you know, Goliath came and stood there and he threw this challenge and said, who will fight with me? See, because they're all watching WWF and all of those things. So it just excites them, you know, just also talking about um, uh, other things, you know, how uh, how Bartimaeus was blind. He couldn't see and, you know, you have to behave, behave a little crazy and act crazy. And then he just, you know, Jesus is the side. He's screaming the side with mouth open. Like, ah, you know, so the kids just get basically very excited. They're able to relate to um, uh, what 
what you're saying. So hearing can also be a beautiful way of uh, how you present it. Uh, uh, demonstration, like I narrated that whole story of uh, the five loaves and two fishes about the young boy, um, how it was painted a picture for us, to how that person painted a picture for us, and how we were just so caught up with the story. So these two can be very, very dominant, yes. Did that help, Kung? Yes, yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, Elisha. Okay, Madam. Thank you very much. Um, these days, the, because there are a lot of um, movies of of some of these stories available on YouTube and on other media, is it advisable uh, sometimes after telling them the story, demonstrating to them, you let them watch the movies to also have um uh, a real imaging of of the stories yes uh we said for those who learn by seeing we can use uh, videos but you'll have to go through the entire video to make sure first of all where the source is because many of these jehovah witnesses have a, a amazing wealth of uh, uh, resources on children's ministry and you need to be very very careful about uh, where you're taking uh, your uh, the videos from also watch the videos because some of them are not exactly like uh, they are um, uh, narrated in the Bible I just happened to click on one uh, video which talked about uh, Joseph and it showed exactly different from what the Bible says so it was I just stopped I just didn't even you know look for uh, look more into the video or just watch it more I just stopped it there because you know uh, it was not what the Bible said so I was not interested so we need to be very careful uh, what they're narrating what they're saying and what they are showing and if it's in line with uh, you know 95 percent 90 percent is with line of what the Bible says you can go ahead and show it to them yes okay any more questions okay we'll move Thanks, on Thank you, Elisha. Uh, we will uh, look at uh, you know these learning styles in a more deeper way. There are eight different intelligences or ways of learning. So there's uh, a person called uh, Howard Gardner, a professor of education at the Howard Graduate School of Education. He has identified eight different intelligences or ways of learning. Uh, and this also shows us how God created us to, uh, you know, respond, receive and respond individually uh, in different ways um, uh, to different kinds of content, uh, such as language, music, uh, you know, nature that he's created or other people. Uh, so this person, Howard uh, Gardner, this professor, the Howard School of um, Graduate School of Education, he has uh, read about these eight different intelligences or ways of learning we'll take a quick uh, look at it uh, the first thing is um, a linguistic um, uh, you know uh, ways of learning uh, you know so we can see that uh, every child actually possesses all of these uh, eight gifts which is uh, linguistic uh, the next one is um, uh, logical or mathematical the next one is uh, spatial or picture gift um and then you have the bodily kinesthetic or uh, the body gift uh the musical gift okay children learn by music and then the intrapersonal and the intrapersonal so you have the linguistic gift the logical gift the spatial gift bodily or the kinesthetic uh, gift musical gift um, interpersonal and intrapersonal. So linguistic is basically children learn through word, a logical or mathematical children learn through logic, special gifts or spatial gifts children learn through pictures, uh, seeing pictures, bodily kinesthetic is body gift children learn by doing things, moving their bodies, uh, excess, you know, activities, musical gift children learn through music, Interpersonal is when we learn through uh, interacting. Um, uh, uh, sorry, intrapersonal is like when we're learning to interact with people. Uh, uh, 
sorry, interpersonal is when we relate with people, uh, and intrapersonal is self awareness. They just learn by themselves. They're very uh, self sufficient. They learn to just be on their own, just learn by themselves. And the naturalist is, uh, you know, ch uh, people or children who learn by classifying uh, things. So we look at um, the first one is the linguistic gift, which is the word gift. Uh, you know, uh, children uh, learn by seeing and by hearing. I've already, uh, you know, spoken about this. So you can provide them books, pictures, videos, object lessons, demonstrations. You can use voice modulation, body movements, eye contact, facial expressions, express the story to the faces that, uh, you know, different faces that you make, uh, different emotions that, uh, you know, feature in the, in the narrative. You can express that. The next one is um, the logical gift where uh, children learn by um, classifying or categorizing things uh, to understand a topic. So basically, these children learn through patterns, uh, through numbers, equations, uh, better, uh, you know, as compared to other children. So if you use a pattern in the sense like, you know, if you use going from Genesis onward, you can teach them or you can teach them uh, from, um, from Jesus's birth onward, how he did his ministry, then the early church. So, you know, patterns, uh, they also learn through numbers, equations. So you can give them uh, various, uh, you know, uh, exciting puzzles, quizzes, activities uh, through which they can uh, identify, uh, you know, truths of the story or uh, uh, learning or the memory verse. Uh, we look at all of them when we are, uh, you know, how to prepare a lesson plan. I'll show you some of these uh, things that you could uh, use. So these children learn through uh, logical or mathematical. They like to think through, reason through uh, things. So even uh, some of these object lessons that has to do with uh, scientific experiments, uh, they would uh, really uh, like that. So you can provide them games and um, uh, puzzles. Um, Next one is the special gift or um, the spatial gift, uh, which is a picture gift where children learn through colors and images. So you just basically provide them pictures, uh, books with pictures, or show them pictures, videos, uh, give them various, um, you know, um, uh, sh you know, coloring sheets or activity sheets in which they can color, which has images and, uh, you know, which will, again, reiterate the story. There are also uh, people or children who learn through bodily kinesthetic, which is the body gift. Uh, children learn by moving, by touching. So these are the children who will be excited to enact the skit. So if, if you narrated a story for to them and then you, you want them to... Um, you know, uh, enacted, these children will be excited to come up. Not all children will put up their hand, but you'll have these children who will be more excited, uh, who'd come to enact the skit, or, you know, you want them to do a role play, they'll be more than excited uh, to do the role play. Um, you have any physical activities like games, um, attention getters, object lessons, uh, demonstration that you want to do. Uh, you know, you could, uh, these children would be uh, very, very excited. For example, you know, um, I, uh, uh, if you're talking about how uh, Moses, you know, touched the river Nile with his, um, with his, um, you know, the staff he had in his hand and the water turned into blood. So you can have a, you know, stick and the end of the stick, you can just put some red color, food coloring uh, powder there. Uh, just stick it on, you know, put some glue on the end of the stick uh, you know, put some uh, food color there, red color, and uh, you know, just have one child who's who's uh, has this gift of learning to bodily kinesthetic or uh, to doing. You know, get that child to just come and take it and touch that water; it turns uh, red. So even those children who learn by seeing will be very excited uh, to see this. Uh, you know, also when. Um, um, when you're talking about Adam and Eve, how God created Adam, you know, he was lifeless. So you have the child just standing there, lifeless. And then you say, Jesus, you know, uh, uh, sorry, God breathed his breath. So you do, 
and uh, you know then you say okay now you become you move around and so the child is moving and now you know adam became a life uh, uh, a living being you know a, a, a human being with uh, life in him or when you're talking about lazarus you know these children will be excited because uh, they learn by doing by moving by touching so you can have uh, a child all rolled up in a white sheet or a white shawl and uh, you can have the child standing out of the classroom and close the door and then you know and jesus went to lazarus grave and he just you know had the ro stone rolled away and then he says come out lazarus and uh, you know the, the the child was fully um, rolled up in that sh white sheet or um, a white shawl come in you know the kids scream with excitement and you know, so these kids really love to do all of these things who are uh, learned through bi bodily kinesthetics so you can get them to do even mimes uh, role plays uh, enacts kids uh, 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 in the class okay and uh, when they are physically engaged in doing all of these demonstration activities uh, uh, games and all of these things you know their mind retains things even more uh, than what uh, uh, you know would would be retained if they're just basically uh, looking at things and hearing uh, things okay then we have children who learn through the gift of music uh, musical um learning uh uh you know gift that children have uh the intelligence of or ways of learning to music these children basically uh, learn when the music is on so they like rhythm they like music uh they like beats so you can just have uh, you know music playing in the background or if you don't have music playing in the background you know you could even um uh, you know convert some of these uh, or play some of these uh, songs uh, which narrate um, uh, Bible stories in the form of song or you have uh, uh, memory verses, scripture verses in the form of song. They would like that. They will learn better. Uh, also, when you're narrating, um, you know, you can uh, get them to, you know, make uh, uh, noises like, you know, when Jesus breathes, like you do or, uh, you know, uh, when Goliath came, you know, you can do boom, 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 you know, or, um, uh, for example, when, um, uh, what else can we think of uh, when it comes to music? Mm. Yeah, you know, um, uh, Pharaoh was hard, his heart was hardened, so they can do this, you know, and he did not let the people go, uh, all of those things. Or when Pharaoh clapped his hand, he called his son so they can clap their hands. So just simple hand movements, you know, things that you can get, uh, 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 you know, them to make noises, sounds. Um, uh, Bati may scream, shout it, they can, you can get them to shout. Um, also, this Jesus, you know, when he calms the storm, you know, the thunder, the rain, the the noise and everything, they can just make the wind blowing, you know, they can make the sound of the wind blowing and all of those things. These children will be very, very uh, excited and it will kind of bring back uh, their attention back to the um, story and music is actually not a distraction for them uh, if you've noticed there are some children you've noticed uh, in maybe in your own families or your extended families or your you know, friend circles children who are constantly playing music in the background and studying so I know of a child uh, actually my younger sister's friend uh, who is an excellent student a very good student gets good marks but even when she's studying for her final exam she will have music playing in the background so she she will have music playing in the background, but she's still studying for a final exam as well because she learns through, you know, the gift of uh, 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 music. Uh, I also have another child in our own children's church. Now she's she's passed out of children's church, but you know. Um, uh, every time she's doing her studies, even in a degree, you know, she's doing her project work, writing, studying, for exam, she'll have praise and worship. She will just plug it on or she'll put on uh, the uh, the praise and worship and she'll be listening to it and she'll be studying. And I had once she was in my house and my room, I had to tell her, you know, please put it off because I can't concentrate. I'm not somebody who has the musical gift. Uh, it kind of distracts me. But for them, it's not a, a distraction. OK, so these children learn through melody, rhythm. Uh, so, you know, there are various um, uh, stories like uh, the story of Jonah, Zacchaeus, um, you know, uh, songs and fruit of the spirit. So all of these songs, you can just play it, use it, teach them. These children will be very, very uh, excited. The next kind of um, 
you know, um, learners are those who have a personal gift, gift the interpersonal uh, uh, gift or learners. Uh, these learners learn by relating the information uh, with others. Uh, they love to work in teams, in groups. They love to share information. Uh, they compare their ideas with each other. So you can see some child, when you tell them something, you narrate an incident or tell them something that you're trying to explain you know like for example you know, this is what happened in my life or this is what happened the other day when i saw it this child will be very excited and they will quickly you know not waste a second or a minute to talk to a child next to them say hey yeah you know this is what happened uh, uh sometime back or, this is what happened and we can get very irritated with them because we think we are, they're disturbing us they're disturbing the class they're disturbing the child next to them but this is how they learn through interpersonal because they love talking to their neighbor. They love sharing. They say, yeah, I think, you know, I agree with her. I don't agree with her because of this, this, this. And they'll, they'll share their viewpoints. They'll share their ideas. Um, or if they know that you totally get annoyed, you know, when they're talking with others, they will just whisper or uh, now it's very easy because they have their mask on. So they love to talk. But also these children, you know, um, will begin engaging with you, they love to ask questions. So for anything and everything, they will just have one question and you think how silly this question is, or you think this child is just totally disrupting my class, or this child just loves to interrupt me, or, you know, I think this child is just enjoying or having fun at my expense, but actually no, it's the, the child learns through interpersonal because they just can't sit quiet and listen and see or all the activities that they do, they just love to talk. They just want to say something or the um, other, OK? Uh, so you know, you can provide group in discussions, uh, quizzes, uh, you know, just two minute discussion with their um, uh, with their uh, friends around them, what they think, what they feel. You see, in that kind of a group, there will be some children who are very quiet, but there will be some who will go on talking and will not stop and not give a chance to others. It's these interpersonal uh, children who learn uh, through interacting with um, others. And then we have um, the other intelligence or way of learning is through intrapersonal. So there is inter with an E and there's an intra um, uh, with an uh, A. So this is a self-awareness gift. You know, they are very different from those who are interpersonal. Uh, these, uh, they don't like to learn with others in a group. They learn best when they're left to themselves. So we see some children, you know, all of the children will be sitting there. They will sit right at the back. They will sit away from others. They will have nothing to do with the discussion. They will not even move their bodies when you ask them to get into a group. They'll be least interested uh, because um, they are the, uh, the self-motivated learners. They can just do things on their own, learn on their own. They enjoy it best when left to their uh, selves, okay? So they learn best when left alone. So, you know, provide space. But you can just say, okay, you don't want to move to your own group. Uh, you can just sit near this group and just listen. You know, so they, they are not missing out on all the discussion or the learning uh, that happens. Uh, but these children will just learn by seeing, uh, you know, by uh, what you're showing them, activities. Uh, they won't be interested in, uh, may be interested in touch and smell because it's very more, or taste because it's more personal. It is connecting to their own person. So they can have these uh, learning uh, styles. Uh, they're not the bodily kinesthetic who like to do things through um, activities. Okay. And then we have the uh, naturalist, which, uh, which is the last um, of the eight that, um, you know, Howard uh, Gardner has, uh, uh, you know, listed out as eight different intelligence or ways of learning. So we have the uh, naturalist. These uh, naturalists are, you know, children who um, uh, learn in a natural way. They can be called natural learners, you know, um, in any of the other ways, their mind, you know, <clears throat> sorry, uh, retains information, even if they're sitting in a classroom, listening to lectures, watching an educational movie, going on field trips, you know, studying alone in a separate room, or, you know, while they're also doing group study, um, these learners can, uh, you know, uh, just uh, receive information, they can get, uh, take content, take in content, data, best, 
um, uh, through, uh, uh, you know, just uh, listening and also through um, experimenting and practical uh, methods. So you see uh, these, they will have a formula for it or they will have an acronym for, uh, you know, the points that they are, uh, they have to study if there is a big question, they will kind of find an acronym, acronym uh, to, you know, which will present the main points. Uh, they like to draw it out. They would like to experiment it uh, in practical ways. Uh, so basically, they learn by classifying things and, you know, um, they also uh, learn by, you know, outdoor activities. When you provide them outdoor activities, uh, you know, by looking at things, studying, observing things, uh, field trips and all of those things. So each children will enjoy it. So when you take them on a mission trip or you take them to minister in an old age home, orphanage, uh, or anywhere, you know, street evangelism, whatever, or praying for the sick, uh, they would be very, very uh, excited because they learn through experiment and through uh, practical methods. So these are the uh, eight different uh, intelligences, different intelligences or uh, ways of um, learning. We need to know that each child possesses all of these eight gifts. Uh, and also all of us can possess all of these eight gifts. But, you know, um, uh, each one of us or each child will operate comfortably in one or two gifts. Even though we all have or possess these eight gifts, you know, uh, each one of us will have one or two which is more dominant than the um, others, which means one or two gifts will be more dominant than the rest. So each student's uh, learning styles or intelligences uh, will consist of a different combination of these gifts. Um, uh, and, you know, children learn best when their classroom activities uh, appeal to their dominant intelligences. Therefore, um, uh, you know, as uh, children's church ministers, as teachers, you know, we should include one or more of these intelligence, intelligences or one or more of these learning styles uh, in our um, uh, teaching or in our activities so that it will minister effectively to uh, each child. But when we choose, we need to be very, very conscious and be aware that we don't choose the activities that best suits our own learning styles um, and don't fall into a trap that you know with uh, what makes you feel comfortable don't think in your terms don't think okay you know this is what uh, this is the way I best learn so I'm going to use these things uh, there are you know and overlook uh, for example I might not learn to uh, to smell and taste so I can overlook it but I need to keep reminding myself hey how can I include all of these, uh, all of the learning styles, and not just choose activities that best suits my own learning style, or also not, uh, you know, do things that are comfortable uh, uh, to do things what I am comfortable with, but teach um, children, uh, 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 you know, keeping it, but prepare our lessons and activities, keeping in mind what you know best uh, children can learn. Uh, or even knowing your class and knowing, hey, this child is doesn't learn through hearing and seeing, has to have some activity, touch something, you know, uh, you know, I need to do something. I just this child is totally distracting everybody else, distracting me. I need to keep that child uh, engaged. So keep uh, prepare your um, class and your activities, uh, keeping in mind the children that you are uh, ministering to, and also, you know, all of these learning styles. Uh, these eight intelligences is not something that we say, oh, you know, this is such a burden to think about all these things, prepare, carry it, you know, uh, do these object lessons uh, prior, see if it works, these experiments, and then go carry all of this to church. You know, um, it's uh, it's quite uh, uh, demanding, it's quite challenging, it's quite difficult. So I just, uh, you know, narrate a story and uh, things like that. But we need to remember that each child is created in the image of God uh, and each of us are different. Uh, you know, uh, each has our own creative ways of expressing ourselves. And uh, also, if 
imagine if we are able to present the truths in God's word in a way that best ex uh, appeals to their learning styles or their intelligences, uh, you know, imagine uh, the excitement they will have to read God's word. Uh, the excitement they will have to go back to God's word. They will not find God's word boring uh, because they would know that, hey, when my teacher is presented in such a creative way that appeals to my learning style, you know, God's word is exciting. It's not boring. Uh, it's not something that I do as a ritual, but, you know, I can, you know, uh, I can envision things. I can, you know, um, see things. I can... Um, you know, just run things through my mind even as I'm reading the narrative. So that's how we need to present the gospel for them so that children fall in love with God's word because it's basically appealing to their, uh, their learning styles. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's appealing to their dif different intelligences or their ways of um, uh, learning. So even as you... Uh, you know, take that uh, steps, you take that, uh, uh, you know, the pain, you uh, you spend time in preparing all of this, you know, uh, the child knows that uh, you are taking uh, interest in uh, in communicating the truths in the in a way that best engages them, that relates to them. And, uh, you know, uh, you would come across as somebody who they can depend on, they can trust in, uh, you become their mentor, you become their friend, um, you know, and they will come to you for creative ideas, they will come to you when they're going through challenges and difficulties, they will even, uh, you know, call you later on in life um, when they're going through challenges and difficulties, whichever part of the world they are, you know, and just... Um, ask you to pray or, uh, you know, help you through some uh, challenging situation, see you through, uh, give you clarity in what they're going through and help you through difficulties that they are uh, facing. So, yes, you know, uh, all of these things can take a lot of time and effort to plan and prepare. Uh, best way to, easy way to do is just talk it out. But when you do all of these things, you know, um, it, uh, uh, it takes, uh, you know, uh, it, it just shows the child how much interested you are and it helps them to uh, just fall in love with you. And also you can become a good mentor and a friend where they can open up and where you are building them up in the ways of the Lord. Okay, so any questions? Okay. Anyone has any questions, anything you'd like to share? Any thoughts anyone has? Uh, these things can also help us uh, to understand our own learning styles. Um, also it helps us to understand our own gifts what God has uh, given us, the gifts, areas of our creativity, how we understand best, also will help you to understand your own children who you try to teach, uh, you're trying to impart things into their lives, uh, whether it's, um, you know, knowledge of the world or, um, you know, scripture that you're trying to teach them. You can understand what is their learning styles and, you know, when you relate to them in their learning style, it just basically helps them a great deal. Or if you are a leader, you are handling a team, you know, you have people with different intelligences, learning styles, use their gifts in their areas of expertise. Don't give them something which they are not good at, which they will struggle, uh, you know, which can become uh, very challenging for them. And, you know, it will be so difficult for you to get things done through them. They will find it so weary. It, they will be so irritated. You will be irritated. Uh, so also important for us to know uh, when we work with um, adults, what is their uh, uh, learning styles, their intelligences, and best maximize on their styles, uh, their intelligences, so that, you know, the outcome can be better uh, or how you are progressing in your project work can also be better. Okay, I'll stop there. If there are no questions... Nothing that you like to, any clarity you'll need? Any comments? Okay, there's nothing, then we'll end class. Thank you all for uh, uh, joining class. Uh,
have a blessed day and i will see you all uh, next monday thank you